I'm Avon. I'm Beverly. And today we're dishing with you from Floriano Restaurant, which is located at 1602 17th Street Northwest in the heart of DuPont Circle. We're very excited to have Beverly with us. We, we will welcome Sonia back, but thank you so much for being with us while she's out. As Yay. always, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks. And today we are dishing with Kathy Truitt. She is the author of the book, False Victim, and it's about mm -hmm. bullying, right? Oh, in a roundabout way, yes. A false Victim is a, it's a book. It's based on a true story. It is autobi autobiographical, autobiographical. Uh -huh. And um, False Victim is actually about a family that moves to the D.C. area. And they're the typical all-American family. You know, two kids, a husband, wife, two mm -hmm. dogs, you know, cats, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. They move to D.C. and their life uh, proceeds. And it's a almost a perfect life. Uh, Julie, who's the main character, she makes friends with a couple of ladies in the neighborhood. Uh, one of the ladies she finds out is a stalker that has a type of stalking. It's it's newly diagnosed. It's a subtext of obsessional stalking and it's called mm -hmm. false victimization. Mm -hmm. So I hesitate to say bullying. It's more along the lines of, of stalking. Uh -huh. What's false victimization? So yeah. we're going to ask the same question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a term I'm not familiar no, with either. Uh, trust me, I wish I I wasn't, but mm -hmm. false victimization is, like I said earlier, a, a subtext of obsessional, and it is almost always women stalking mm -hmm. women. The uh, have you ever heard of Munchausen, Munchausen, yeah, Munchausen by, by proxy? By proxy. Yes. It's, it's part of what the psychologists call the Munch bunch. So it is a type of Munchausen by proxy. Uh, the uh, the perpetrator has a a need for attention and a desire for the world to revolve around them and they're just not satisfied unless everything is about them. Usually the difference with false victimization is uh, it's they're actually infatuated with their victim. Not in a sexual way but uh, like for instance you might think you're very pretty so I want to be like you and uh, I want to wear your outfits and normally us girls you know you probably maybe can't wear this but us girls we like to do that. <laughs> you know, we do that all yeah. the time. But this goes a step further. further. Well, when is it? Okay, in the book, now it is mm -hmm. autobiographical. You yes, right. So, I am Julie. So a lot of you, a lot of this has happened to you. Oh, you're Julie. I, I am Julie in the book, yes. You, there is a little bit of exaggeration, right? Just a touch uh -huh. of exaggeration? Mm -hmm. Just a touch. Okay, but this goes, this crosses mm -hmm. the line. I mean, we're talking like calling the police mm -hmm. and things like that. And not you on, or Julie mm -hmm. on the person, but the person calling the police on you. Exactly. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you want me to tell you what's exaggeration. Yeah, I mean, what's, yeah, uh, share with us a little okay. bit. There were, there were a few parts that my editor wanted me to to exaggerate a little bit. There's a, there's a part in, in where uh, Julie is in a 7-Eleven and she drops a Slurpee on the person. Now, she did see this person in the 7-Eleven, but there was no dropping of Slurpee, anything like that. So they just kind of added for effect. Uh, Julie also did not spend a weekend in jail. It was very close. But everything else, everything else is true. So you never spent a weekend in jail. I did not spend a weekend in jail. Try to get you but spend a weekend in jail. I did. I Julie was on trial for attempted murder for something that did not happen. Um, yes. So let, let's talk about how this person's obsession with you or Julie would mm -hmm. get Julie on trial for attempted uh -huh. murder. Well, one first of all, you have to know that I was not her first victim. And there was something about the house that I moved to that the, the lady before me was... When we found this house, it was a house that was five years old, but yet the lawn looked as if it had never been mowed. The inside of the house was completely torn apart. And, you know, but of course, you know, back in the early 2000s, how difficult it was to buy a house in this area. So it was the first affordable house that, you know, we had tried for about 40 different houses, and we found this one. And I thought, this is no problem. I've always wanted to take a house and fix it up. And uh, so that's what we did. And uh, you have to understand the one thing with people that have false victimization. I said they have an infatuation with their victim. And like I said, it's it's not sexual. It is it is they want to they, be you. They want to be that person. There's something missing in their life that they want. And they um, they latch on to this person. Well, no matter how much I admire you, maybe how much I want to be like you, I will never be Beverly. Right. I will always be Kathy. Right. That person becomes frustrated because they can't become that person. And so they start to, they, they have to 
make the other person a bad guy. So she got so frustrated that she turned it all around on you. And it started. It started with uh, calls from the school trying to take our son away from us, trying to say that we were abusing our son, and. Um, so even more than being in court for attempted murder, I can forgive that, but the trying to take away my child, that, that's a little hard to get over, you know. Well, okay, you've gone through all of this, mm -hmm. and this person I'm assuming is still out there. Are you, Sadly. Why, so what you happened? Try, I just I read a book about it. Are you nervous? Are you scared? <laughs> no, I, no, I'm Do not. Do you worry that she might see this? Right. And, 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 you know, I, I guess that remains to be seen. Um, how do I explain that? I've always been I've always been a writer. I was a radio personality. I always wrote my own material. I've written news stories. I've written ad copy, and I've always wanted to write a book, but I've never had a plot. So, incidentally, when you talk about this, you really have to put your pride aside. So I will just just wipe my pride off the table and tell you that it cost us financially everything we had. Um, we ended up having to leave. There was a point that I was a prisoner in my own home. We had to have either a witness or a bodyguard with me at all times until I left. And um, finally, we were advised by the magistrate judge that you really just need to leave. There, we really can't do much for you until she's caught doing this. So I knew that when we left, our savings had been drained, you know, trying to keep Julie out of jail mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, trying to keep us safe. And incidentally, at the time, my credit was good enough that I, I had spent our whole life making sure that we had good credit, mm -hmm. everything was taken care of, mm -hmm. and if everything had been wiped out. But my credit was still good enough, I knew I could buy a house without my husband because I knew what was going to happen with the market. I knew that I could not buy a house and afford it. And my husband was like, just get us into a house, we'll worry about that later. I tried to sell the new house before the market bottomed out and it didn't sell, we ended up losing everything that we owned. Everything. Um, not only was I a girl who had been arrested and was looking at a prison sentence, which obviously I was found not guilty, you know, or I would be sitting here, um, but it was, I was looking for a way to make a living and a way to get myself out of, out of the financial problem. So, I had had so many people tell me through the four years, you have got to write a book about this. So I did, and I shopped it and found a publisher, found an agent and a publisher who uh, pitched it to a made-for-TV company. Sounds like and I just going to say, this, 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 this needs to be a movie. movie. It's, going, it's going to be in 2011. I can't tell you what company bought it until uh -huh. it's filmed. Uh -huh. But um, Will you be playing in it? No, I, I have no say. I, I think I get to help a screenwriter. I send him a book, and I I don't get to don't get to say anything at all about who they cast. I will tell you that I was thinking of Thomas Gibson with Criminal Minds mm -hmm. to play Tom. And Julie, of course, has to be beautiful. So I'm thinking Gail O'Grady. I don't know if you're familiar <laughs> with her. Very beautiful Wonderful. lead yeah. movie, so of course. Uh -huh. you know. When you write the book, you get to be taller and thinner and everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, was, I, was, I, was, I mean, I, uh, I have read the book, and, I, and now we know, we kind of know how it ends because mm -hmm. you're, you're here with us mm -hmm. today, so we mm -hmm. generally know that she's not in jail. Uh -huh. But if, if it had been the other way around, and the um, the other lady was writing the book. Uh -huh. What do you think her story would have been? Just uh -huh. kind of summed up. Really uh -huh. quickly. Well, you know, this I would this and also that was not the first time. Is I was always in court for some a crime I've been accused of that I had never done, and um, so a lot of times she would change her story. So you have a true, true Hollywood slash DC story. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, we're we're glad you're sitting around the table yeah, with us today talking about it. And, not behind bars, sure. but you have to read the book to really understand what's going on because, man, it's a story. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank Kathy. you for having me. Thanks, Thank you. You can follow us on Twitter at The District Dish or be our fan on Facebook. Tell us what you thought of this episode and check us out next time right here on The District Dish.